Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at how we can apply bubbles pop-ups into Toddle. So, pop-ups in Bubble are fairly straightforward. We have a, a component for them and we drop it on the page and we get something that looks like this, okay? Which it automatically gives us our own background so that we can, if you like, blend the 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 main app into the background so that we're focusing on just this pop-up and then we get these properties that we can decide the color of the background how, how blurred it is for example all of the various different styling options that we can have and we can also set the size of it etc etc and if we just run this so what i've got there is that basically you've got the main page it's got a button on there and the pop-up so it's hidden by default, as you'd expect, unless you click one of these eye things and then you can see it. So if we, well, if we run that, just click the, the pop-up, shows up, and then you can either click on the gray space or you can click it and put your own little icon, close icon on there. And obviously you can have what you like in there as well. Okay, so let's apply that in Toddle now. So Toddle doesn't have a pop-up in inverted commas a pop-up component you kind of have to use web standards to create it but it's very very straightforward if you watch my video on floating groups it's, it's almost as easy and once you you know how to do it then it's absolutely fine so on the page here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another div directly under the main container div okay and to do that we can either click add an element or press E or right click and select add element and we're going to put a div on there div again if you've not watched previous videos is the equivalent of a group in bubble to all intents and purposes so we've got this here now what this is going to be this div is essentially going to be our background here okay because bubble sort of automates this for you but we do need to have something that changes its color to, to ob ob obfuscate <laughs> uh, the the main app while the pop-up becomes like the main focus so what we're going to do then very straightforward is on the placement the first thing we need to do is to set it to be fixed okay because we want it to be the full width of the of the, the page is essentially okay and we need to then set it like of a width of a hundred percent and a height of a hundred percent okay and what we also need to do we need to set the distance here from the left right because what we want to do is to make sure it's zero from the left zero from the right zero from the top zero from the bottom okay so we're going to do that okay we still can't say anything just yet because we've got to set a background color so i'm going to set a background color of let's say we'll choose one of bubbles uh, built-in colors Bubble, sorry, toddler's built-in colours, uh, which would be, I can't see it, where's it gone? Grey, okay. Grey, say 600, okay, and then we get that, okay. Now, obviously, we don't want it to be completely uh, blanked out, so what we can do is just go down to uh, effects and select opacity, and the opacity between 0 and 1, with 0 being invisible and 1 being uh, completely visible. So we kind of want it about 0 0.7, I would say. Okay, and then we get that effect there, okay? Uh, the other thing as well is we don't want it sat at the same level as the page. We want it sat it kind of floating above the page. We, want it, we don't want it at the page level in terms of how the, the document is, is rendered. And so the way that we do that is we set what we call a Z-index. And again, that's under placement and Z-index. And we'll just set it as one. Now, now Z-index, it sounds really complicated. It really isn't. Uh, all it means is that the higher the number of the Z-index, the further away from the screen and the nearer to the user it is in terms of layering up the different things. So obviously a modal or pop-up sits on top of the page. So that's going to have a higher Z-index than the page. So a few kind of webby concepts here, but still very, very straightforward. Again, just make sure that you set it to be a fixed layout uh, with all of these set to zero. And again, you, you basically set these from here with the position, the distance and the Z index uh, and make sure it's 100% width and height and then you get that effect. 
right all good so that's our obfuscation thing there now obviously we need to show and hide that you don't want that showing all of the time so what we need to do then is to set some kind of show hide now show hide on in toddler is just simply setting a formula but we need something to set it to show a hide upon and so we set a variable over here so I've already got one called show pop-up so I may as well use that one one I've been playing around with so it's just a variable called show pop-up obviously it's false at the beginning and yeah so then I can just right click and show hide and I can just select that particular variable because it's false you can see that it that it changes if I set if I go back and I set show pop-ups value to be true okay then you can see that that is being shown okay so now we want the pop-up itself so what we do we create another div but not inside of this one okay it can't be inside the the background it has to be on the page but remember we're talking about z index so it kind of has a higher z index than that so it'll float above not only the page but also our pop-up background so we're going to go back to the page we're going to add a component again it's going to be a div and this one is going to be our actual pop-up and so we're going to do a similar sort of thing we're going to set it under placement we're going to set it to be with position we're going to set it to be fixed and we're going to set distance and we're going to set z index so we can just set these so i'm going to set a z index of five which means it's above the page and above our background and i'm going to set a margin of auto so let's say we want the width of this to be 50 percent and we want the height of it to be let's say 40 uh, percent okay and then we can sort of see what, what's happening there so what we'll do is we'll put some positioning in here so we'll say right okay from the left position we want that to be 25 percent 25 we don't really need to set the right uh, and then from the top let's say we want that 15 percent and so that's where our pop-up is going to appear uh, let's do some styling on it we obviously want uh, we obviously want a radius to give it some rounded edges we're going to need to put a background color on there again i'll just use one of uh, toddler styles you can set its own hex color if you like but we'll set one of its standard styles and let's say uh, just set that to where are we let's say sky 50 okay and maybe we'll put a shadow around it we'll just put uh 10 pixels 10 pixels we'll put a blur of four pixels and a spread radius of two uh that's a horrendous color for it so we obviously want something a bit more lighter than that so let's go for that one uh it's still probably too big isn't it let's set it to sort of four pixels instead and make it a bit more subtle there we go okay uh right so so there's our pop-up there now again we're going to need a show hide on there as well so we're going to do the same sort of thing which is show hide and again we're just going to base it on our show pop-up uh, variable and that way whether it gets shown or hidden is dependent on whether that that variable is true or false now in bubble we do it a different way is what we do is we when they click a button for example that we have a workflow on that button and we show the pop-up and then we want to hide it we then hide the pop-up okay so it's very very kind of explicit it's kind of proactive if you like now bubble is reactive in many ways but in this regard it's proactive you've got to click a button and then you've got to set something to show explicitly or to hide something explicitly okay in toddler it's much more reactive rather than proactive so what you do is you just set the variable and let the system then based on these these formulas such as show and hide determine what happens so what we can do then is i've got a button here for pop-up now obviously we do need something that's going to trigger that pop-up so yes we are being proactive in that regard but you do need to have something that's going to an event that's going to occur to force that pop-up to appear but the point is is that we don't then on the pop-up we don't then set an event uh, a click event and then say go and show this pop-up that's not what we do what we do is we set the variable and that variable which will be show pop-up 
is what controls whether these are sh uh, shown or hidden okay it's just similar thing it's just a different approach so we're going to do set pop-up and it's already set to true in here so that's all that we really want is, is for that to be set to true when they click this okay so that's set up for us on that pop-up button so I think it was on here yep so there's our pop-up and we got an event there uh, to, to show it okay just let me make sure that I've not missed anything on our pop-up div that we need to set in terms of styling uh, I don't think so oh I just wanted to put uh, some padding around it okay 16 px okay so let's just test that now and see if we get the result that we expect so we'll run it in there click pop up yeah we've got it so when we click on this nothing's happening so what we need to do then back in the editor is we need to uh, where are we just let me close this up so we've got so this is our background pop-up background that's our pop-up so on our pop-up background we also need an event so over here under events we create a click event and then we again we're going to set the show pop-up variable to false so let's click formula and we'll just go in there and we'll set false so the reason we need to do that is there's not an automatic way that when you click the background like you're doing bubble that the pop-up automatically uh, disappears okay that's something again that we need to do manually with this one it's not a big deal it's just a couple of extra steps so if we run that and then we click on that then that goes away and yeah so it's just similar similar principles okay that pop-up looks horrendous at the minute in terms of the shadow so uh, let me change that uh, where are we yeah are we on the right one we are on the right one okay so probably the color because it's on that other background it probably needs to be darker than the background uh, where are we where's our grays so let's just put that on there and we'll also just uh, put the blue radius to two pixels <laughs> okay right so uh, run that that's even worse right let's just see what about that one ah that, that's probably a bit better isn't it okay that'll do right okay so now we can just populate the uh, the details of our pop-up so uh, on our pop-up div what we can do then is we can just uh, add an element let's say that this one is going to be a we'll put a span just to, so that we can add some text on there uh, we'll just set that to be a uh, a row container and we'll set it the horizontal to be spread because what we want is the title on the left and we want the like an image on the on the right okay so we will just then let's go into that and we'll just name it uh, just call it pop but title similar to what we had with the other one so now we want an image on the right to close it so I'm gonna go over to uh, iconify my favorite little icon library and let's see if they have an X anywhere I think it would be on the first page There we go, that will, that one, will, well, that one will do. Okay, we don't want it 256, we just want it maybe uh, 20. Okay, and what we can do then is just copy this SVG, copy that into our clipboard, back into Toddle, and then on the div, we're just gonna paste that in, and that's gonna add it in there. Okay, and all good. Now we then need to just have an event on there to trigger the close, so uh, we click on that, go to events actually we'll click we'll do it on the SVG on the left C click for events and then again we're just going to set the show pop-up to be uh, we want it to be false to close it okay there we go so if we now run that okay we can click to close it and yeah oh good in there so 
just maybe one little thing there is that when they do click on the on that SVG we want the cursor to change so let's say we go to effects and then cursor and then we want it to be a pointer and so when we click pop up we get that as a so that we can see that okay that's how you do pop-ups but in a basic sort of way well that's the only way <laughs> uh, but obviously one of the key things that you can do in toddlers components so we can what we can do is actually turn that into our own pop-up component and maybe I'll do a video of that uh, again so that we kind of mimic what bubble is doing so rather than having to do that every single time although when you if you're on a single page app you really only need to do the background once okay and then that just gets can get triggered with every pop-up that you put up but it would be better if that was all combined into a pop-up which is what bubble uh, gives us is one single control and then we can we just work with that control so in total you can certainly create a component a pop-up component and then use that so maybe that's something that we'll go into but for now I just wanted to give you the idea about how you would take the concept of pop-up or modal or uh, dialogue uh, whichever way you want to call it in, in bubbles case it's called pop-ups and apply that into toddle so that you can do the same sort of thing anyway I think that's it for today thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you got anything from this you know the drill have a good one and take it easy